Today on Cloud Renegade, we're doing the February 2021 UCOMS update. Hey all, Adam Ball here, Cloud Renegade. Um, this is one of those episodes that we used to do a lot more frequently uh, with the pandemic. We ended up getting off and not doing them as frequently, so we're bringing this back. Uh, this is the UCOMS update. Really, it's a rehash of a lot of things that have come out in the last month or two. In this case, it actually dates all the way back to October of 2020. Uh, this is the episode for February of 2021. Lots of great stuff that's happened. Had to narrow it down just to keep this from going on for, for hours, trying to keep this down to a short episode or a, a semi-short episode here. With that, we're just going to go through, talk about all the various things uh, that have come out or have been announced uh, and dive right into it. So let's get to it. All right, first up is Microsoft Ignite. Uh, yes, it is happening March 2nd through 4th. Um, amazing that it's already here. It feels like it just happened because it kind of did uh, way back in September. But time has just gone fast. I love the fact that we all say, hey, we have more time because of the pandemic. But uh, everybody I talk to has been busier than ever. Um, definitely a big issue there. But nonetheless, lots of great content coming to you. You can register today by going to the Ignite website um, and, and getting signed up. So again, March 2nd through 4th should have a ton of great content. Next up is a change to guest access in Microsoft Teams. This guest access is going to be set to be enabled by default. Um, this is actually uh, coming here very shortly. Um, so if you haven't uh, been paying attention or you had guest access turned off for some reason, you might want to pay attention to it. Um, it it's really just going to make sure that, that we can have the best experience and bring people in uh, to the conversation. I'm going to save my uh, metaphor for guest access to a whole nother episode, but I have, a, I have a metaphor around it of why I enable guest access and why I think you should too. Next up, Skype for Business Online Retirement. Are you ready? Um, are you ready is a real good question. We have six, less than six months now. So July 31st of 2021 is when Skype for Business Online officially retires. Um, we actually had a good conversation around this at the user group. Microsoft actually gave us two years to prepare for this. Lots of leeway um, and but from my experience as a consultant, uh, my day to day, I'm actually seeing most people ramping up and moving off of Skype for Business Online onto Teams pretty well. And so I think this one's going to stay. Um, you never know, but I do think this one is you need to be prepared and need to be migrating your users off of Skype for Business Online. Skype for Business Server is still supported, still valid. That's not going away. Um, it's just the Skype for Business Online. So I want to be really, really clear about that. Cool aspect here is that we're now getting shared calendar in Teams. If it's not in your tenant, it should be soon. Um, the channel calendar is really neat. I know we use it internally for things like uh, vacation calendars, things like that. So check it out. Uh, and like I said, really probably lots of use cases for it. You could put timelines from, uh, if you're doing a project, you could put timelines on that and just have a, a group calendar so everybody can see that. And that would be actually a really neat way to, to be able to showcase timelines there. But this is coming soon if it's not there already for you. So we're going to dive into some devices next, and uh, I'm going to highlight some that I've seen come to market or be announced that I think are really cool. The Logitech Rally Bar, I'm really excited to see this. Uh, Logitech just basically took the Rally Kit, combined it all into one unit into a Rally Bar. Really nice packaging. Uh, the Rally Bar Mini and some other things that were announced with it will be coming later this year, but this this is the first piece that'll come. And every like I said, it, it just looks like a really nice piece of equipment. Be able to mount it right underneath the display, have your speaker and your camera all in one, um, and just have that nice looking uh, piece of equipment that blends really into the background right underneath the display. So I'm, I'm excited for this one and, and what it can bring. 
So a few more things that have come to play. Um, one, we're getting sidecars. Um, I know Josh Blaylock had a video on his YouTube channel showing uh, the audio code sidecar. Um, Yaylink's bringing one out. Lots of cool stuff here. Um, we have audio codes has a new phone. It's very similar uh, with that touch screen to like the all touch screen to the CCX uh, version that Poly had. Uh, I know audio codes is also planning to bring out uh, some lower end phones with actual touch buttons on it. And then we also have the new decked headset from Yaylink, which is a dual decked and Bluetooth uh, device. Uh, really cool, it's the WH66. If you missed it, I did an unboxing of that uh, on the channel. You can go back and check that out. Um, we're gonna do a review, a full review of that here shortly. Um, just wanna give some time to just get enough, uh, enough time with it to give good feedback on it. This one uh, actually was, it gathered a lot of conversation uh, during our user group meeting. This is the new uh, MP50 phone from Yealink. This is a USB phone, very uh, akin to the old CX300 that came out with the OCS era. I know every once in a while people will talk about it and everybody I've ever talked to remembers that phone with fondness just because it was just plugging in with USB, off we go. What's interesting with this is this phone is a USB, it plugs into your computer, it becomes an extension of your team's desktop client, so you can have a phone call and everything, you get the best of both worlds then, but it also has Bluetooth, so you can actually pair a headset to it if you want to. Um, so really neat, um, has some great features. Um, this, I actually talked to uh, some folks and it's looking like this is a March or April delivery. I know one of the Microsoft folks actually had a demo unit, uh, couldn't showcase that, um, but just that, that the unit is actually in production and should be out soon. So this one goes back a little bit, back to November, so you pretty much have to be under, uh, you know, a rock or something if you hadn't heard that Microsoft Teams got breakout rooms. Uh, this is huge for the EDU space or if you're a trainer and you want to be able to take a group of people and have them come into one meeting and then divvy them up into other meetings into some breakout rooms. Really neat, uh, long-awaited uh, feature that m folks had been looking to Microsoft Teams uh, to bring out. Finally went GA back in November. So cool stuff here. All right, this one was one feature that I really missed from the Skype for Business days. Um, this is that ability to have multi-number calling. So if you look up in the upper right-hand corner there, um, what you can see is that you can see next to the phone icon, there's a drop-down arrow, and now we can have the mobile device and the office. I don't know anybody who would actually dial their office number like that. Maybe, uh, maybe if you're in a hybrid situation where you've got people populated, um, and uh, but maybe they haven't been moved over maybe they're still on a legacy platform like a uh, T, uh, Cisco or an Avaya or something and, and then that way it'll call them um, but this is really handy for mobile numbers because I don't remember anybody's mobile numbers anymore uh, if I can't find it there or if you're not in my mobile device I'm just not going to notice it uh, I'm not going to remember and so it's going to be a tough a tough one um, but this is just a really nice feature to have Next up is noise suppression. I actually wanted to link to the uh, actual video that Microsoft put out, um, but couldn't, they didn't have the embedding for it. So we've got a link here to uh, my video testing the Jabra Evolve 65Ts in noise suppression. What's neat about noise suppression is, is that there's an auto, high, low, and off setting, and you can set it to where you need it. I have found that the auto setting is actually really, really nice, gets the best of both worlds. In the high, you actually see a lot more CPU utilization, so if you're on a slower machine, you might want to th reconsider that. Noise suppression is not a substitute for noise canceling on a microphone, but noise suppression does a lot uh, to help with uh, canceling out background noise, things like that. Maybe if somebody's shuffling papers and you're on a speaker puck, noise cancellation is a great feature for that. So check it out.
All right, so next up is call merge. Uh, call merge is the ability to take two phone calls and just merge them together. This was something that we had in Skype for Business. Uh, and so really nice again to see these features coming back into the product um, as they get reprioritized. Uh, never really noticed too badly the uh, inability to do it, uh, but now that I have it, it's really nice to be able to take a call. I might be on a call with one person, need to call somebody else uh, to get them on the phone, and then I can merge it into one conference call. Really nice feature to have for that. All right. Next up is the survivable branch appliance. Uh, again, something else that came over from the link in Skype for business days. The survivable branch appliance allows for you to place this appliance at your um, at wherever you've got your uh, PSTN connection, whether that be a PRI or a SIP trunk or something like that. And you might have an office where you need to make sure that one-to-one -one calls can come in. So if I dial a DID, that that call can still come into a person. Um, and then even if the WAN connection or the internet connection is down. So that way, if I'm sitting in that office, internet goes down, I lose my connectivity to Teams. I can still get my phone calls because I have the SBC and I have this survivable branch appliance sitting in that office, I'll still be able to get it. This is all done through partners. Um, it's just a, a small piece of uh, a small um, virtual machine that runs on the appliance on the SBC. So audio codes, Oracle ribbon and TE systems also are uh, known as our friends at any node. Um, they all have offerings for the survivable branch appliance also uh, known as an SBA. So check it out if you are in one of those situations where you really need that high redundancy of phone calls coming in. Teams Pro, this one was actually just announced here within the last week. I know there's been some chatter around it uh, since this hit the message center. Um, one of the things that has been stated is, is this is really more around the idea of if you're on like an E1 or an F1, adding some of the meeting intelligence and webinar capabilities to those lower level SKUs. From what I understood, and I could be wrong because there haven't been a lot of details out here, is that if you've got an E3 or E5, all these features are included with it. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what Microsoft comes out and says more about that um, just as, as it comes out. But really, uh, just again, another license skew that we might have to be paying attention to. So the one-to-one -one call recording policy, this has always been done through the meeting policy um, prior to this. Now we're actually getting this moved over to the team's calling policy. Makes a little bit more sense to me that meeting recordings would be in the meeting policy, one-to-one -one call, call recording uh, would be in the, call, in the team's calling policy. Makes just a lot more logical sense. It was nice having it in just one spot with the meeting policy, but it, it was always confusing to tell people, yeah, if you want to handle one-to-one -one calling recording, you need to go to the meeting policy. So I get why they do this. Um, really quickly though, this last bullet is what's important is by default, this new policy attribute will be set to false. So if you need one-to-one -one call recording, um, you need to go and change that. It will not be enabled by default. Next up, in meeting share experience is going to be changing. This is a message center um, uh, alert that we got. Um, I really like this as, as I look at this and I say, oh, look, we've got the um, the message, the sharing used to be happening down here along the bottom. Like, so you'd hit the, the share and it would pop up all your stuff along the bottom. Now, all of a sudden we get this nice long uh, window here. Uh, if you click on the window, to show your individual windows, you'll be able to pick from a list of that, or you can just choose your screen. This seems way more clean to me. Uh, super excited to see this. Registration pages for meetings. Uh, lots of text here, so apologies. Didn't have a good, haven't had a good screenshot, um, but this one was kind of neat to see. This is another message center. Um, it's going to be rolled out in the mid March timeframe. So now you can actually have a registration page. So if you say, hey, like for our user group, this will be great. I might not need to use something like Meetup. I'll be able to actually post this out uh, as a link and have people register and then be able to get the meeting invite. Um, 
um, this is a really neat feature, uh, whether it's a public webinar and live events or whether it's a regular meeting. Um, this will be really, really handy, especially in this day and age where we're doing so many events in virtual or so many meetings are virtual because we're just not allowed to meet yet together uh, around the world. And so while we look forward to that day that we can all get back together, uh, this is going to be very, very handy. So our meeting lobby setting, setting. Um, one of the neat features here, this is another message center um, that's going to change, is that you're actually gonna be able to do instead of um, who can bypass the lobby, instead of it being everyone or, or uh, everyone in my organization, um, it's actually gonna have only invited users join directly. This is super handy because now you can say if you were on the invite list, you can bypass that meeting lobby and jump right into the meeting. But if you weren't invited directly, now you'll have to wait. So if somebody forwarded you the link or whatever, you'll have to drop in. This gives that meeting organizer that control that they need. Many times I'm just wanting people to join in. I don't want to have everybody join in. Um, like I don't want to have that everyone, or maybe I consider that a security risk uh, due to some of the other uh, incidents that happened earlier in 2020 uh, with a with another meeting service, uh, which actually turned out to be most of the time people were just sharing their their meeting links out on the internet. So if you don't want that to happen and you want to have that control, but you want your invited users to join directly, this will be for you. This one I actually think I have talked about previously in a UCOMS update, but it's so handy and it's always improving. I wanted to bring it back. This is the connectivity check. So connectivity.office.com is the link. Um, in this case, you can actually go and run the tests and it'll tell you whether or not you're connecting directly to Microsoft in the most efficient manner. I know when I ran it the first time I actually found uh, from my home office, I was connecting uh, to a place that was not the most optimal and actually when I did change, make some changes to my home network and to my DNS settings, that I was actually able to connect to a closer um, front door to the Microsoft network and I actually found that my experience improved. So really handy, if you're a help desk person and you're trying to troubleshoot somebody's issues at home uh, because they're now in a homework situation, sending them connectivityoffice.office.com and having them run the tests and taking a look at what they get back could be a very handy first step for you. All right, and probably the biggest announcement that came out of everything um, over the last little bit, or at least in the last week or two, is Viva. Viva is a new way for people to engage inside the workforce. Uh, a lot of these tools are tools that we might have had already, but there's going to be some new tools coming as well. And we'll, we'll take all of this in through Microsoft Teams. A lot of details still to come on this one. They just announced it here uh, earlier in February. And I know even as an MVP, we got the information very short prior to the announcement. I heard from several of the Microsoft uh, folks that they too got information just before the announcement. So this was a, a big piece of, uh, a, of a surprise to, to an extent, I'm sure uh, internally there, there were people knew about it, uh, but this is gonna be really neat. What this will allow for is, is everybody inside of Teams will be able to, to take all of these tools and it'll be a seamless experience. So instead of jumping out from Teams to another tool, now I'm being able to consume all of these things and like being able to connect with people through connections or, or whatever it might be or insights and finding out more about what does my week look like or what, what's going on because uh, we have insight my insights today. So it's kind of bringing that over. This is going to be a, a big thing as Microsoft goes forward. So we're going to look forward to the summer. I'm sure at Ignite here in March, we're going to hear more about Viva, but we're also going to see it come to fruition a lot more as we get closer to summer of 2021. So with that, I want to just say thank you. Um, you can look in the description below and you can actually get a link to this PowerPoint that's from our user group here in Colorado. Um, really appreciate all the folks who were able to attend. Uh, hopefully this has been useful to you to just kind of find out about some things that maybe you didn't know about previously uh, and you want to investigate more. I know I didn't go into real depth in anything. If this was useful, 
um, give it a like or a subscribe. Um, really would appreciate that. Trying to bring out a video a week for y'all. And uh, from there, if it, uh, we'll hopefully talk to you next week. Thanks.